uh, the team is um, working primarily on the FSD functionality, which is our uh, full self driving suite. So here we have about FS, we have the FSD beta product, and it's in the hands of about 2,000 customers. And this is an example from one of the customers driving around San Francisco. And uh, these people are posting videos on YouTube, so you can check out a lot of videos. But what we're showing here on the instrument cluster is we're showing all of our predictions. So you're seeing some road edges, uh, some lines, some objects. Um, and the car, of course, is navigating around autonomously here in San Francisco environment. Um, now, we, of course, drive this extensively as engineers. Uh, and uh, so it's actually fairly routine for us to have zero intervention drives, I would say, in like sparsely populated areas like Palo Alto and so on. I would say we definitely struggle a lot more in uh, very adversarial environments like San Francisco. A lot of people working in autonomy, of course, know all about that as well. Uh, so this drive ends up being a fairly long drive and it's zero interventions um, in this case. <clears throat> now, one thing I like to point out always whenever I show the video of Tesla driving around autonomously in these city environments is um, you've seen this before and you've seen it for a decade uh, so or more. So here's a Waymo taking a left at an intersection. And uh, this is actually a pretty old video, I believe. And so you've been seeing stuff like this for a very long time. So what is the big deal? Why is this impressive? And so on. And I think the important thing to realize and that I like to always stress is that even though these two scenarios look the same, so there's a car taking a left at an intersection, under the hood, and in terms of the scalability of the system, things are incredibly different. Uh, so in particular, a lot of the uh, competing approaches in the, in the industry uh, take this LIDAR plus HD map approach. And so the idea is that you take an expensive sensor, a LIDAR, on the top of the car, and um, it basically gives you range finding around, uh, around the vehicle in 360 and gives you a point cloud. And what you have to do is you have to pre-map the environment uh, with the LIDAR sensor, and you have to create a high definition map. And then you have to insert all of the lanes and how they connect and all the traffic lights and where they are. And you basically have to create a high definition map. And then at test time, you are simply localizing to that map to drive around. And so the approach we take is vision-based primarily. So everything that happens, uh, happens for the first time there in the car based on the videos from the eight cameras that surround the car. And so we come to an intersection for the very first time and we have to figure out where are the lanes, how do they connect, where are the traffic lights, which ones are relevant, what, what traffic lights control, what lanes. Everything is happening at that time um, on that car and we don't have too much high definition sort of information at all. And this is actually a significantly more scalable approach because if our product is on a scale of millions of customers on earth, and so it's actually quite unscalable to, uh, to actually collect, build, and maintain these high definition LiDAR maps. Um, it would be incredibly expensive to keep this infrastructure up to date. And so we take the vision-based approach, which of course is much more difficult because you actually have to get, to ne get neural networks that uh, function incredibly well based on the videos. Uh, but once you actually get that to work, it's a general vision system and can in principle be, be deployed anywhere on earth. Uh, so that's really the, the problem that we are solving. Now, in terms of the cartoon diagram of a typical sensing suite of an autonomous vehicle, uh, these are kind of like the typical sensors you would see. And as I mentioned, we do not use high definition maps and we do not use LiDAR. We only use uh, video cameras. And in fact, um, the um, vision system that we have been building over the last few years has been getting uh, so incredibly good that it's kind of leaving a lot of the other sensors in the dust. And so actually um, the cameras are doing most of the heavy lifting uh, in terms of the perception that you've seen in the car. And actually it's gotten to the point that we are able to start removing some of the other sensors because they are uh, just becoming these crushes that you start to not really need at all. So actually three weeks ago, we started to ship cars that have no radar at all. So we deleted the radar and uh, we are driving on vision alone in these cars. And the reason we are doing this, I think is well expressed by Elon in his tweet. He's saying uh, when radar and vision disagree, which one do you believe? Uh, vision has much more precision, so better to double down on vision than do sensor fusion. And what he's referring to is basically, like vision is getting to the point where the sensor is like 100x better than, say, radar. Then if you have a sensor that is dominating the other sensor and, and is so much better, then the other sensor is actually starting to like really contribute, it's actually holding you back, and it's really starting to contribute noise uh, to the former system. And so we are really doubling down uh, on the vision-only approach. And... Um, Actually, in this talk, what I would like to primarily talk about is how we have achieved vision-only control without radar and how we have released this uh, quite successfully so far to the fleet and what it has sort of um, taken for us to, 